Good day to you, Craig Jaber here. Lovely to see you all again, 2022. It's a fantastic opportunity to start off with some very basic op opportunities in marbling for fun. Um, so today we're gonna be creating a solid background on our water surface. Um, the water surface obviously has been mixed. It's a premix of float powder, which we have in our kits. And that's what we call a size. That's what the paints float on. So once you've diluted your colors, and once you've mixed your floater liquid and you've kept it overnight to cool down and thicken, um, just remember to top up the tray uh, with your liquid. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna simply tilt the bottle a few times, yeah? And then of course, pour it into your tray to make, to make it to the brim. This is for easier pickups, um, purely because uh, the system works that way. Um, so for a full drop of color, there's a few techniques to drop the paint onto the water. Of course, each and every one is different, um, but be light-handed. And when I say light-handed, the actual paint is um, in the pipette. That pipette back section is for massaging the paint and mixing it in the pot itself. So all we're doing is we're massaging the paint all the time to keep it mixed. When you drop it on, the paint does come out quite quickly. So just drop it one drop at a time and it'll open into a section, into an area. So we're going to continue dropping it um, in areas where the drop ha hasn't been dropped. Um, so we have, there's five drops so far and that's plenty of paint for a background design. Um, you'll notice the next few drops that you use is very little paint. So I'm going to use <clears throat> a lighter color, a cream color, knock it on my finger and you'll notice this will be just small, very small drops of paint. And you can keep doing that with whatever colors you choose to do so with. Um, and this is what we call stone marbling techniques. Now that background color, that we used originally is going to compress and make these little narrow lines and those lines are called Italian veins. Um, it depends how much of that first color you used as to how much it gets compressed. Um, and all we're doing again is um, adding color to create contrast with your design. So now we are creating a balance of colors on that surface of the water. Um, and if you want to touch the surface of the water, that's another option. Um, but again, not squirting it out. And less is more when you're starting. Don't do uh, dropping too many colors in it. Full drops of paint as, as we've done so far. This is another option for kids. So you take a stick, a stylus stick, and you dip it into your paint. And you simply apply the paint wherever you want to. So this is far more controlled system and it works like a charm. Um, so you just take off the excess paint and dip into another color and so on we go. We are creating little drops of color. Now I don't know if you can see the contrast in your screen, but there is loads and loads of paint in this, in this design. Now, now the, the point of fun comes in, we can do something with this. Of course, it's entirely up to you. If you go straight through a circle, we're gonna create a little couple of hearts. If you go to the center of a circle in straight lines, we've got ourselves a flower. We can do some doodles, twirls, whatever you want to call them. They are the awesome, awesome little designs. Um, and before you know it, you have a beautiful pattern of which we're going to show you. So I haven't used a lot of paint at all. Um, and we're going to print this one onto a piece of paper. This is 160 GSM. Um, the paper is curled so that the the print uh, runs on the curl. So when we drop it in, we curl it as we put it onto the water surface to avoid air pockets. And now we have one beautiful work of art pattern, which generally seals in very quickly with this paint. There we go. And that will sit um, down and simply dry. So there we have our first print which is a spectacular work of art with a few drops of color as um, the burgundy red I used 
was the base color. So that is that pattern. We're gonna move on to another color. Um, now remember, it's always good practice to clean your tray with a bit of kitchen towel. So we're simply gonna take the kitchen towel, put it on top of the surface, push in the four corners and pick up the excess paint. This is what we call obviously cleaning. And of course, it picks up dust as well, which is also very important. We're gonna discard that in our bin. And now we are a, a, a clean slate, fresh tray to carry on with our next printing process. So this is what we call dragging or um, it's simply taking the pipette. Now, as you know, the colors come out by themselves. Um, you can actually hold the pipette there and the paint will drag out it by itself in a line. Now you can obviously hold it at the back and gently allow the paints to come out in a line as well. And then you can see what's happening. I'm creating a different background uh, um, technique. Um, now we have three lines in the tray and obviously a bubble will pop eventually, but if you wanna encourage it, you're welcome to do so with a cocktail stick. So now we have the same sort of background, but they have lines instead. Um, again, you can also continue with your lines if you want to and create other colors to add to your pattern. Um, and this is pretty awesome. I'm gonna teach you how to use a rake by using lines. Now you can see how again, the background color is compressing because the other colors are compressing those colors. Um, you can add the same background color anytime you wish. It's entirely up to you. But be gentle when you gently press the back of a pad to continue that line. All right, so we've got some burgundies in there. We're gonna add a little bit of, uh, let's try some emeralds. Now all these colors we're using is on our website, marblingforfun.net. You're welcome to purchase them. Um, I've mixed a few here, I'm mixing colors with the country kit, and I've got some, all sorts of beautiful colors that have, have derived from it. Now all we're gonna do is show you how a rake works. This is called a half inch a rake, which is obviously half inch apart with galvanized nails that don't rust, which is awesome. And all we're gonna do is simply drag across those lines in one direction, and that is already a pattern called a non pareil design. If you want to go back through that, we are going to be creating a chevron design. Um, and you can continue with this pattern as many times across and back on itself to create a, the, the same chevron, double chevrons. Um, if you want to go across with a finer comb, this is called a pin rake, which is six millimeters apart. These are small, the small rakes we have on our website. You can get the bigger ones for an A4 tray if you wish. And this one is dragging the opposite direction and we'll get this very beautiful fine result, which is called a non pareil design again, um, the finer version. Um, and so that is gonna be the design we're gonna print. So this is more traditional modeling. The, other, the first pattern we designed was um, more contemporary designs. Again, we curl the paper to avoid air pockets and we dip it from one side, roll it down to the other side to avoid those pockets. And we have what we call the, the non pareil design, which is a stunning pattern um, using the rakes. And that from, for today is um, covering how to uh, cover your surface and create a uh, base color. The base color is the dominant color of your pattern. Um, the other colors you add are small drops of paint so that you don't overwhelm the, the colors and uh, you get these beautiful patterns. So uh, that's me for today. Just giving you a few hints and tips as I like to do. Uh, that's how we teach. Um, I'll be joining you again soon and take care for now. Bye-bye.